So in my spare time, I've been getting back to basics. I originally used to can quite often um, when we had our own home garden. And so it was not un unusual to be canning tomatoes, chow chow mix, all kinds of stuff, sauerkraut. I mean, I feel like I've almost done it all. That's something I wanted to get back to now having the house and the resources and a little bit of extra time to do so. And so, I've put my hands to work <laughs> at going back to canning. And while this doesn't look like a huge um, amount, and it's not truly, um, you know, it's a big thing for me because it's been years since I've been able to actually sit down and do this and actually enjoy doing it. Um, sometimes canning can become a bit of an arduous thing to do. In some cases, it can become an all-day thing to do, depending on the amount of quantity you have. I wanted to do this in order to start getting back into learning some of those skills that I was taught when I was younger, and also just being able to prepare when we have an excess of things. And so I got quite lucky um, in that my neighbors across from us have had a, just a stunning pear tree and I've been oogling over it, <laughs> I think, ever since we moved in. And I didn't want to go over there and be like, hey, can I have some pears? Because they look amazing. Um, but they were fortunately kind enough to come over, introduce themselves and bring me a big bag of pears in which I was able to get four of these. The other one is just, it's already been devoured. Um, and so that was nice because essentially it was free to me. Um, I did also do some strawberry preserves um, or jam as well because, you know, this is probably my favorite. Um, and I got quite a bit out of um, two large things of Costco strawberries. And I think the key to making this successful if you can't grow the things on your own is to find those deals when you can. And so that's what I did, is I tried to find the best deal for bulk. Another way for those who live towards Amish country, or they have some Amish folks who do wholesaling around them, is go to some of the Amish auctions because you can get, uh, my friend used to get pallets of strawberries for like nothing. <laughs> and so they would spend pretty much the weekend just canning and saving up so that's also a way if you can't grow your own right now maybe you don't have the space you don't have the time that's another way that you can get into preserving and then i also tried my hand at, and this is almost done because it's been delicious um is prickly pear so i am fortunate enough in this new property that we have a prickly pear um, cactus in the front. And so what I did is um, once the tunas, as they are called, which is the fruit, is ready, I went out and picked some. I got, unfortunately, I don't think I got a photo of it, but I, I don't know, under 20 at least. And I was able to get at least one jar um, of prickly pear jam. And so that was a interesting experience because with the prickly pears, you have to make certain that all of the burrs are off of there. And even yes, the fruit contains those at a microscopic level. And so that involves some burning um, to try to get those off of there, which is the typical way to do it. Some people freeze it. I was just too nervous. So I said, you know, we're just gonna go with the tried and true method of burning them off seemed to work fine. Um, I went through and cut the outer skin off and then um, just use my processor to process it all down and then sieve it through um, some fine mesh um, just to make certain that I got everything out. And so, like I said, it made one jar, one tiny little jar, but it was awesome. And so next year, I'm definitely looking forward to that. That is one thing that Paul and I, or Paul really wants planned, especially out on our property land, is that he wants to have um, a lot of prickly pears and native things planted out there. And so that's definitely on our list. And so hopefully we'll be more in production of getting us some more free um, types of jellies in that regard. So 
Yeah, so this video today is going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I did have a batch of something that I thought would turn out and it was just quite awful. And I ended up having to just scrap the whole batch, but you'll get to see. Um, but yeah, it's been great getting back into this get again and you know reteaching myself. And so yeah, I wanna share that a little bit with you and hopefully you enjoy, thanks. This first one I documented was for pear butter, uh, which is similar to apple butter for those who are familiar with that. Um, so basically, I got to work just chopping up and peeling the pears that were so graciously given to us by our new neighbors. Just making sure that I was getting the cores out of the way as well. Once those were nice and chopped up, I added those to a pan on the stove and then I added just a little bit of water to help them break down a little bit. And then we moved on to adding about a teaspoon of lemon juice. And then we just set everything to start boiling. Once it reached a certain um, temp and started to get that nice little bubbling and boiling. We let that simmer on the stove for about 20 minutes or so. Just again on kind of a medium heat. And then I took my immersion blender and then made it to this consistency of like an applesauce. Then we added a tablespoon of pectin about a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a cup of brown sugar. Then we gave everything a nice good stir to get everything nice and incorporated. I forgot my vanilla, so I added that in at last minute, gave everything another stir, and then it was time to get these freshly warmed up jars filled with delicious pear butter. This was about the consistency at the end stage I was looking for, nice and thick. And so I got to work with filling my mason jars. It's important that you preheat your jars either in some boiling water, some people do it in their dishwasher in order to just have jars that are the same temp as or close to the temp of the filling that you're putting in them. Um, this is to avoid having the jars essentially crack or break during the water bath canning um, stage. So you'll see I tried to get at least four jars out of it. It wasn't quite successful, which is okay with us because we were able to like go ahead and start eating on this delicious pear butter. Got about three-fourths away full, just couldn't get anything else out of the pan and into there. We're just gonna add the lids on, finger tight, not overly tightened. Now it's time to put these jars in the water bath. I do have a larger water bath container, a nice big enamel pot that most people are used to canning, but since this was such a small batch, I didn't want to waste the water. So I just went ahead and did it in my smaller stock pot that I own. The next recipe I want to take you along on is for an orange marmalade or an orange just preserve that I was trying to use these leftover cuties that Paul and I had that we just did not want to touch and we didn't want them quite going to waste so I got to work at peeling all of these that were left over Thank you. 
Once those were completed, I added them to, again, my pot. And then I turned the heat on, again, to just kind of a medium heat to start to try to break down those clementines or cuties. I did end up adding a little bit of water to help them with the breakdown process and as you'll see I was using my hand masher to try to mash them and break them apart and get them nice and softened up. This was over about I would say 20 minutes or so it took for everything to kind of break down. I let it continue to boil before adding in some lemon juice. <laughs> then I added in some sugar. And gave everything a nice good stir. I did run this through again my immersion blender to just try to get everything nice and broken up to a smaller consistency. Make sure to heat up my jars for canning. And then it was time to fill the jars. Since there were still some big chunks of the fruit in here, I wanted to definitely make certain that I went down through um, with a stick or a skewer and just make certain that you're getting any air pockets or air bubbles out of there because that will also not allow everything to seal properly when water bath canning. <laughs> I went through all this trouble and... Um, yeah, I got pretty much almost to where I was about to put my jars into the boiling water bath, the hot water bath to seal them. And I figured, mm, I wanna taste this and you know, see if it's okay. I still had a little bit left in the pan after it had you know simmered down and everything. It is so bitter. I don't know if it was the clementines I don't think I added too much lemon oh it's so bitter I mean I can still taste it in the back of my throat it is so bitter so I've pretty much wasted <laughs> my afternoon making this making a mess and I'm not gonna save these because they are so terrible and I guess that's just the luck of the draw. Sometimes you have good batches. Sometimes you have really bad batches. It's all dependent on the fruit. My bad for not trying it, but man, oh man. Let's chalk this one up as a fail and then never again. <laughs> Friends, thanks for letting me share my canning adventures and misadventures with you. I hope you'll join us next time as we get back to work on some of the homestead stuff. Thanks for watching.